Hey guys, hey! My name is Steph. My hair is now pink. It looks red. I swear to god it is pink. And I am here to film a bookish talk video. One of those videos that's kind of a part vlog, part haul, part review. So let's just first get into the haul portion of this video. I've been to two Salvo stores in the last week and I've had amazing success at both of them so we'll go through the first ones together um so i went to a savers uh sorry a salvo's closest to my house and they had two full shelves of stephen king books which they've never i've never seen them there before so i picked up first needful things um i really like the episode of rick and morty where summer works um for the devil and i'm pretty sure it was inspired by needful things um so this one was four dollars then I also found Joyland by Stephen King. Pretty sure this is set at like a carnival or an amusement park. And I just love the vibes of this cover. Um, it was $2. And the one I was most excited to find out of the Stephen King books was the Bachman books. This has Rage, which I've read, enjoyed, but is a super controversial story. Um, the Long Walk, which was my favourite book of all time for like 10 years. Um, Roadwork and The Running Man. I haven't read those two, but this is just a... I've already read two of the four and I love those two stories so very excited to find this one and it was three dollars and correct me if I'm wrong I really thought the Bachman books was out of print or that Rage was no longer included in the collection because of all the controversy someone educate me um then I found Tote by Chuck Palahniuk I've read I think five or six Chuck Palahniuk books now and even if I don't love the book itself I'm always interested enough to finish them um, and this one basically follows a guy who scams people, like, he pretends to choke at restaurants, and the person who will inevitably end up saving him, um, well, in his plan is that they will then feel obligated to keep you alive and make your life better, so that's the kind of scam he runs, it's to do with his mum, to pay for his mum's hospital care. Um, this one was three dollars, and at this particular store, the last book I found was Saint Anything by Sarah Dessen in a hard cover. So I had the paperback, which I have now unhauled because I've got the hardcover instead. This hardcover was $3. It is in great condition. Um, she's not anything special naked, um, but Saint Anything is my favourite Sarah Dessen book, so we upgraded to a hardcover. Then at the second store I went to, I only found two books, but they are two books that I never would have thought to find there you know how like you go to a secondhand store you expect to find like a couple copies of twilight john grisham books dean Koontz. like you expect to see certain books there these two i never would have expected so the first one i have is magic for lies by sarah gailey this came out because remember when it came out and i wanted to read it and i never did this came out 2019 so four years ago i've been wanting to read this for four years and i just didn't want to commit to buying a copy because I hadn't heard much about it. Um, this one was three dollars and if I enjoyed this I am going to go on to purchase The Echo Life, I've decided. And the next one, I have a couple of books from this author but I don't have this one. It is The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell. I think this might be one of her more popular ones. This one and Then She Was Gone are the ones I've heard the most about. And this one was also three dollars. So Oof, that is the whole section of this video. Let's get into my review section slash things I'm feeling currently. I am attempting to make my way through Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I'm at a page 150 and it's taken me a week to get there while listening to the audiobook. I really, I, I think I just need someone to tell me, stick it out, it's worth it, or give up if you don't like it now and you never will. Because... I don't enjoy the characters. The ca characters are infuriating. The plot so far, like we're 150 pages in and we're only just kind of starting to get a plot. Um, but at the same time, I've heard so much good about Holly Jackson that I kind of might force myself to stick it out. So someone just needs to tell me yes or no. But I'm going to put a pause on that momentarily. Look at this big ass pimple. That's disgusting. And I got scratched by a cat on my eyebrow before. That was really fun. Anyway, 
I'm going to put a pause on Holly Jackson just for like a day or two and pick something else up. So I've got five potential books I want to pick up. Two because I know I'm going to like them. Three because I'm not sure I'm going to like them. So the three I'm almost convinced of unhauling. I've got You Are So Perfect by Laura Silverman. This is a coming of age queer story um, that I bought ages ago and never picked up. We then have Birthday by Meredith Russo, but I do know that there is quite a bit of controversy around Meredith Russo. Um, and I did read If I Was Your Girl, which I enjoyed at the time of reading it. I just don't, don't know if Birthday is worth my time. Um, it's about Eric and Morgan. One of them ends up being trans, I don't know. But they were born on the same day at the same time in the same place. Except they're not twins. Like, they're just best friends. Um, and the last one I have is One Small Thing by Erin Watt. I always, with Erin Watt, assume I'm not going to like their books. Um, but then I read one of the other standalones. One Small th No. When It's Real. I really enjoyed When It's Real. So I've only kept this around this long. Because, you know... I am hoping that it's just as enjoyable. Um, and the two books that I want to read because I know I'm going to love them. And I'm kind of low-key making this author like a goal to read all of this author's works. I have got um, The Locked Door and Never Lie by Freda McFadden, my queen. I've read three of her books thus far. Um, I just ordered another one from Amazon. So we're going to stay on this train as long as we can. The Locked Door follows a woman whose father is convicted as a murderer um, and he would commit the murders in the basement while she was at home. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what happens from there. And this one follows a couple who move into a new house and they find that it used to be belong to a psychologist um, and they read through the psychologist's transcripts or something. And the book I just ordered on Amazon is Ward D, which I think is the newest Frida McFadden, but I don't know which of these five to start with. I want to go shortest to longest, but that never works for me, so I don't know. Or do I just keep reading Five Survive and hating my life? Like, mm. anyway, um, yes, so at least this haul is now filmed so I can put these books on my shelf. And I really need to find my two other Freedom McFadden books or my three other, oh god there's three of them I want to dedicate a place on my shelf to Freedom McFadden but I would need to find the rest of her books first anyway um this isn't over I'll probably come back to tell you what I ended up reading and if I enjoy it hey guys hey it is now Monday next day and after the last clip I picked up you Asked Perfect by Laura Silverman. I sat here and I just read the entire book from start to finish. Really, really strong book. I really liked it. I think, um, especially for like someone younger, someone who's like 16, 17, going through the last years of high school, like this book reminded me of my own high school stress, how overwhelmed I was all the time. And I think it would be more helpful to a younger audience, but I still really enjoyed it. I thought I was going to either DNF it or unhaul it. I did neither. It is staying on my shelves for the time being we'll see you know a couple months time if I still want to hold on to it I also wanted to discuss I got some bookish parcels today some book mail so um my brother actually purchased these next two books for me um they are fairy loot editions i believe are they fairy loot yes um fairy loot editions of two books that i really 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 loved when i read them and wanted to have beautiful copies of so there is a bit of damage to these books i did not realize how awful the fairy loot packaging is it came in this the box it came in was really thin cardboard that hadn't been taped down properly so it was almost about to fall apart and there was nothing like no stuffing in the box to make sure the books couldn't move around so obviously they are slightly damaged i'm kind of annoyed but anyway i've waited so long for these um sorry my brother ordered these for me for my birthday and they finally arrived and it is an enchantment of ravens and sorcery of thorns by margaret rogerson look oh they're just they are so 
beautiful they well you can see here very good I don't know how to make my camera focus. Tap it. Oh, there we go. You can see the damage right there, which is very annoying. So, don't love that, but they are, yeah, like both signed and they both have um, artwork on the end pages. And what is most exciting is I bought the third book in this set um on facebook marketplace because this came out before enchantment of ravens and sorcery of thorns and it is vespertine right so i bought this by itself in anticipation for these two so now i have all three margaret Rodison books in beautiful fairy loot editions they are all signed and they all have gold foiling and just i love them i love them these are going to look so beautiful on my shelves. I also received a book from Amazon. I only bought this because my friend Lita bought this. I saw this book on like a dark and disturbing Facebook book group. And I saw it and I was just like, eh, whatever. Like how many more disturbing books am I going to read and be disappointed by? But then my friend Lita came over and she told me that she'd, she had this book. And she wanted to read it to see just how bad it was. This book is, I think, making its round on the socials because there is a content warning halfway through the book. Like most um like splutterpunk books have a warning at the very start, sometimes an author's note explaining what triggers there are. This, I mean, 60 pages into the book has a content warning, and like it says, remember it's a book, remember it's just a book, remember it's just a book. Um now not to like toot my own horn but i've read dead inside i've read womb gone to see the river man i'm looking at my shelves eric laverica talia like i've read quite a few books that i would be i would consider like you're disturbing oh the slob i've read so much aaron beauregard um so i'm really keen to see how no one rides for free stands up against those other books um, my friend later already read it and she literally, I think she messaged me going, it was definitely different. So I'm probably going to read that now, but I am also waiting for another book, um, to come in the mail today. And I watched a horror movie called Cadaver. It is a Norwegian horror movie. It was really, really good. Highly suggest watching it. It's on Netflix. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to start reading No One Rides for Free. And when my next bookish parcel gets here... I'll show you and I'll update you on what I'm reading but goodbye for now so I'm up to page 60 the page where we've got the warning the following pages of no one rights for free are so graphic disturbing and depraved we are legally obliged to give you time to put it down and decide whether or not you want to continue reading here's my issue cocky much <laughs> I'm telling you I I highly doubt that this book is going to meet the levels of depravity and gore that Aaron Beauregard puts in his splatterpunk books. I just, I think it is so presumptuous to be like, ooh, like, put the book down and give yourself time to think about whether you really want to read this and do this to yourself. This better be, like, it better be fucked up, is all I'm saying. Can you say overhyped? Um, yeah. Okay, it's it's gross. It's probably disturbing to some people and gory and gross, but literally pick up anything by Aaron Beauregard and it'll take you to a like the next level of horror. This I would say is probably fine for beginners of Splatterpunk. Um but like the slob or Wedding Day Massacre or Yellow, like those books were disturbing. This having a content warning on page sixty was just like like it's very much like I would say this is a beginner spotter punk like if you've never read like a depraved horror book before this is probably a good good place to start I'd say um but it was nothing special you know um the other thing I wanted to talk about is I just got my package from fabled um I don't know how well so that's the box like 
totally crushed. And what is really annoying me is the box isn't taped. Well, address. The box isn't taped. Like, the box is... I'm saying I received it exactly like this and that's it it opens I'm really surprised they didn't even tape down the main flap and while I can't necessarily blame them for the way that the box is like completely damaged um I'm not super impressed to be honest um especially like who doesn't tape the flaps of a box down it's very strange to me because I don't know it's just and like I really have enjoyed fabled in the past but this book this is the April book right the April Knights book um we are oh god and they've used this fucking glue that has ruined my nails um we're almost in june and i'm only just receiving the april book now because like there was some quality control issues which you know cool they probably made the right decision by um delaying the release of the april book but then i've got the salacious players club series that was supposed to be sent out I think it was late May, early June. That's been pushed back to, to July. And I'm starting to get a little bit irritated that they are not... Like, the quality has gone. I didn't have any of these issues last year, and it just seems like out of nowhere. Um, there's delays, there's pushbacks. The parcels aren't taped shut. Like, it's... <sighs> It's a whole thing. Um, but anyway, let's see. We have got Knotted by Pam Goodwin. What the hell is that cover? That is fucking ugly. Um, so I'm probably going to just take off the dust jacket and pretend it's not a thing. Oh, good God. Why is that a horse? I mean, I do love the pages. We love a spread page. I like the colours of the cover and I like the foiling, but why is there a horse? Um. No, oh, it's about a cattle rancher. But this is actually signed. Because sometimes... Um, they're not signed. I just, I Fabled really, my friend Lady the other day said that she wasn't, she thought she would really enjoy Fabled and she just hasn't. Um, and at the time I was like, yeah, but like, pom uh, Promises and Pomegranates still beating, like, there have been a lot of good books lately, but I'm kind of starting to... <sighs> agree with my dearest friend Leila. Um, okay, I'm not expecting any more parcels today, so I got my Fairy Loot, No One Rides for Free, and my Fabled. Um, I might read a couple of chapters from One Small Thing, um, but then I am going to have a nap. Actually, I might just have a nap straight away, because I'm pretty tired. Cool. So, I am just on my way to Bob's house. We're probably going to watch a movie, I'd say. So yeah, talk to you later. Friends, it is Tuesday evening. I'm about to have dinner and then I'm going out to see a TikTok comedian's show. I'm very excited. If you've heard, what's his name? Luke Kidgal? Kidgal? I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he is adorable and really funny. I'm very excited to go. I'm going by myself. A Steph night out if you will um but I wanted to come on here and say that I read a book today um one small thing by Erin Watt this is a book that I was like if I don't enjoy it within 50 pages I'm DNFing it and I'm unhauling it and I ended up reading the whole thing and I ended up really enjoying it so what this has taught me is that the last two books that I thought I was going to DNF 
and then unhaul I enjoyed within 20 pages and continued reading which really makes me think that Five Survived by Holly Black uh, Holly Jackson is going to be a DNF and an unhaul because if I'm 150 pages in and I'm not loving anything about it maybe it's just not meant to be maybe but like 150 pages like I've made a good effort this is my issue this is why I say I try and give myself the 50 page mark because by page 150 I'm over a third of the way through the book and I'm like well what's another 60% like I'm just gonna have to get through but I don't know if I want to um but either tonight when I get home from the comedy show or tomorrow I will start Birthday by Meredith Rosso despite the controversies around this author I'm just gonna give it a sh give it a shot and if I like it I like it I'm gonna keep it and if not then it's going in my unhaul pile but anyway let's have a look at my makeup look oh my god my house phone is ringing um ignore oh my god ignore that wing ignore everything basically it's not actually that good of a look but I've started doing my eyes like a pinky peachy color because of my hair and then once I dye my hair purple I'm probably going to do some purple eye looks anyway um that's all I wanted to say I didn't watch any movies today because my mom was home from work which means I didn't get to use the tv at all oh I did see speak no evil last night at my friend Bob's house I didn't update you that movie I loved the journey like the first hour and 20 minutes was fabulous and then the end was like oh so, like, I give it three stars. I'd recommend it, but don't get excited about the ending. This wing is really annoying me. I mean, they both kind of are, but I'm going to have to fix at least one of them. Anyway, I'll tell you how the show goes, and I will see you later. I am back from the comedy show I went to, and it was hilarious. Oh, God. I feel like pink eyeshadow always seems to stain. Anyway. I don't think I said before that I finished One Small Thing and I really enjoyed it, but I don't think I said what it was about. We follow two teenagers, Beth, whose sister has passed away prior to the book starting um, in a hit and run. And we follow Chase, the guy who, well, it wasn't a hit and run, but we follow Chase, the guy who hit Beth's sister um, and has just come out of juvie. And it is obviously a romance and no one wants them to be together because like, you wouldn't think it would make sense, but I really liked it. So I am also keeping this book. So my DNF unhaul plans haven't gone that great, but I am going to start birthday and hopefully I will finish it tonight. So last night after I got back from the comedy show, I started reading Birthday by Meredith Rosso and I didn't stop until I finished it. I don't, I haven't researched the controversy surrounding Meredith Rosso yet. What I will say is that this book made me feel a lot of feelings. Um, we follow two best friends, um, Eric and Morgan. Eric lives in a very tumultuous household and Morgan is a trans girl but hasn't told anyone in her life just yet. And it basically follows these this friendship every year on their birthday so you don't see any of the year in between you have like 13th 14th 15th all the way up to their 18th birthdays and this just I I was on the brink of tears quite a few times it was a very very harrowing story I've read a couple of YA books this year that um deal with a trans main character and I don't think any of them have done it this way which is, I feel like, the way it needs to be done. So, yeah. Um, cool. I'm keeping this book, not unhauling it, which was not part of my plan. But anyway, I um, <sighs> don't know if I want to continue reading YA books until I find one that I will DNF. I am about to DNF. Five Survived by Holly Jackson. I'm going to give it one or two more chapters. 
but I really I just I cannot be bothered with that book um so yeah I don't know if I should pick up Freedom McFadden I don't know what I feel feel like reading right now to be honest maybe I'll pick up something I don't know but when I decide I will let you guys know hey guys I just washed my hair so I look like a bit of a drowned rat but my hair doesn't look like it faded that much during this wash cool um so i am reading little do we know by tamara island stone this is another ya book i'm just i'm gonna keep this trajectory going of reading ya books until i'm sick of ya books i think um anyway this book follows um the fallout of two best friends hannah and emery they live next door to each other used to be best friends had a falling out we don't really know why well i kind of do but you don't know why and <sighs> It is, this is a very complicated book and I, I'm not loving it. I'm enjoying it, but I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to keep it at this point. It has a lot of conversations about religion and death and we haven't really delved too much into friendship, but there's definitely some grooming going on in this book, um, which It's sneaking up on me in a way that at first I was like, oh, whatever, it's harmless. But it's kind of getting to the point now where I'm like, where is Chris Hansen? Someone called to catch a predator because this shit is not okay. Um, and teenage girls, you know, when they think they're in love, they think they're in love. My hair looks so red on camera. I swear to God, it's pink. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm not loving the predatory vibes um i'm not loving that one of our characters is just completely ignoring the issues that her boyfriend's going through or like isn't aware that some things need to be spoken about i yeah so i'm 250 pages in i'm going to finish it tonight if i don't dnf it by then but i'm probably going to finish it tonight i will give you oh, my thoughts and feelings and then I'm going to start another book and hopefully finish another book. It is. I'm using my phone to record so I can't see the time. Nope, definitely can't. Um, it is almost 11pm. Um, but I thought I was going back to work tomorrow. Um, I'm not. I'm not going back till Friday. So that's an, uh, an extra day off. My plan is to basically stay up as late as I can reading tonight. Whether it be 2am, 6am, whatever time it is and then get a very little amount of sleep so that I'm still tired tomorrow night to go back to work. It's a terrible plan, but we'll see how we go. Um, but that is all for now. I will keep you updated. I don't understand Emery, right? Her boyfriend, it's on, it says it on the back of the book. Emery's boyfriend has, I'd say a near death experience, but like he actually dies for three minutes. Obviously after being dead for three minutes, you go through a lot mentally, I would assume um like i'm not gonna spoil the entire book but anyway he's obviously still having trouble moving on from the fact that he literally died and he says to luke his name's luke he says to emery um and uh, i need to show you something i'm afraid you're gonna be mad it's about the night i got hurt okay this is from emery's point of view he said it like he was dreading my reaction and I sighed. I didn't want to talk about that again. I was trying to move on to camping and s'mores and good things that had nothing to do, that had nothing at all to do with almost losing him. Like, I'm sorry. I've never dated someone who's died for three minutes and then been revived. So, you know, I'm not an expert on the topic, but I would assume that when something like that happens to someone you claim to love, you would be there to listen to them. Even if it's upsetting to you, like, they died. Like, they probably need your support. And she's not being that person. And it is just very painful for me to read. I'm not having... <laughs> I'm not having a great time right now. Ah. Our character, who was being groomed by a 22-year-old, just told someone about the relationship. And they're like, oh my god, get it, girl. Are there words? Are there words? Okay, it is a quarter to 12, like it's almost midnight, and I just finished Little Do We Know by Tomorrow Island Stone, and I was right. Like, it was fine. Um, 
but I'm going to unhaul it. Um, what did it say about this book? Um, we still never acknowledged that a 22-year-old teacher figure was making out and interested in his 17-year-old student, which was weird because um, we talked about other rapey things, I guess, is not the right word for it. Other sexual assault situations in the book but we completely ignore the fact that there is an adult in the church grooming a minor so yikes um which honestly kind of annoys me that in this book tomorrow island stone is kind of like oh they you know the main the girl hannah is being groomed by like I said, someone who works at her church, he's like a teacher figure to her, he's five years older than her, she's 17, he is 22. And it really annoyed me that the one character Hannah tells about this relationship goes, oh my god, like, oh that's like, you know, is all giggly and happy about it for some reason. Um, and that the fact that there's an age gap is acknowledged. She literally says like, reasons we shouldn't be together, he's a teacher, he works for my dad, forgot to mention that he's older than me he's got a fiance but none of that ever leads into a conversation about grooming teenagers which made me very uncomfortable and I think maybe that's why I didn't couldn't really throw myself into this book um and again I just don't like there are some YA books I can still relate to this isn't one of them um like me and my best friend We've had like gone through bouts of not speaking, but we are definitely tighter than those two girls were. Um, and I guess that also made it really hard to relate to because, yeah. Yeah. Um, also, there was a lot of like questioning faith in the afterlife and what happens after death? Is there even an afterlife at all? And I am pretty secure. In my religious beliefs or lack thereof so yeah definitely not a book I could relate to in any way there wasn't a single aspect to this book that I related to um so I'm gonna give it like a is two and a half stars too generous or too mean I'm gonna just stick with a 2.5 it was average there were things that were good about it there were things that were terrible about it and then I'm going to unhaul it and I'm going to pick up another book, but I don't know what book it is going to be. So when I know, I will tell you. Hey lads, I decided to pick up Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. And I'm already a little bit confused because I see that the genre on Goodreads is magical realism, fantasy, paranormal. And we've seen a ghost, like I'm 20 pages in and we've seen like a ghost, like two characters acknowledged. That's a ghost. But like... Is it actually a ghost or is it like a physical embodiment of their past traumas like they're the figurative ghosts I don't know I think I'm gonna be very confused the majority of this book um, but I also think it's going to be a quick read and I would really love to keep this because look how pretty the cover is anyway I'll keep you updated I am getting such culty vibes from this book, which I didn't, I, I don't, so on the back of this book, it says a modern ghost story about trauma and survival, chosen family and rebirth, but this family does not seem normal. Things are a bit weird. Like I'm probably just about halfway through and I'm sure that in the end it'll turn out these people are lovely. But at this current moment in time, I don't trust anything that is happening. I feel like a broken record, but I don't understand what this book is. I don't understand. Because everything is so culty. It reminds me of like The Honeys and like Midsummer, And I don't, I don't understand what I'm reading right now. 
So the lovely people in this book were not part of a cult. They were just a group of people who found family in each other and loved each other. And I still think, I still feel like this started as a horror book. And within the last 50 pages, Nina will cause like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll make it cute. Maybe I'll make it a sweet story about finding family. Um, I'm going to keep it. I like this the same way I liked We Were Liars by Elokart. The same way I like basically anything. Oh, you know what? That's not really true. Anyway, I am going to keep it for now. I just don't really know how I feel about it. It is a strange book. Like I liked it, but it was strange. Um, it is. You can see that. One fifty-one in the morning. So I'm probably not going to finish another book tonight. I know I said I'd stay up till 4am or 6am. But I think my eyeballs are getting a bit sore. What I will say is I did get a package from Amazon today. Because my book buying habits don't. They're limitless. You know. The first one I bought was Frida McFadden's newest book. Ward D. I think this is set in a psychiatric ward. Um... And it's about our main character doing an overnight rotation. Bad vibes, I guess. And then the other two books I bought are books one and two in a series called Leviathan Fitness. So we've got Muscles and Monsters. And we've got Tentacles and Triathlons by Ashley Bennett. I think these covers are adorable. I'm trying really hard. I'm not trying really hard. I enjoy a good monster romance. I'm trying to find more books to expand that genre for me and I just these covers are adorable so we obviously follow a okay well we don't have a specific name for him werewolf wolfman um and then in the other one we have got <sighs> again it doesn't really say what type of creature he is I would assume some sort of kraken water creature. Anyway, so I got these three in the mail today and I am expecting a parcel from Big W tomorrow, today, whatever. Um, which is a pre-order of the newest Christina Lauren book. So that's exciting. I smashed out two books today. I'm very proud of myself. Yeah. It's 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 the 2 a.m. crazies. I'm starting to lose my train of thought. Either I go to sleep now or I push through this little bit of tired and then I'll go into full hysterics, which is always really fun. But then like that's another two YA books I've knocked off my list. I'm running out of oh, I'm not really running out of YA books to read, but I'm definitely not sure where to go now. Like, do I want to reread Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea? I only bought that duology because I never read the second book. Maybe. Or do I want to try and finish Five Survive? <laughs> okay. <laughs> my god, I've got fat wrists. Look how fat my wrists are. Anyway, I'm going to listen to maybe one chapter or two chapters of Five Survive. And then make the difficult decision to keep and finish or to DNF and unhaul. I have been a very absent vlogger today, but I did actually finish Five Survive by Holly Jackson, which I didn't think I was going to. Um, basically, we have our main character, Red. She's on a road trip with five friends in an RV. The RV breaks down in like this really secluded off the, the track kind of road. Or off the road kind of track. Anyway... And uh, they realise very quickly that there is a sniper out there. And he basically says, no one is allowed to leave. I won't let any of you go until you guys collectively figure out who's keeping a big secret. I want to know what it is. And he knows what the secret is. 
well he doesn't know the specifics anyway that's irrelevant it for a book about six teenagers stuck in an rv with a sniper outside it shouldn't have taken me over a week to get through and while i enjoyed the twists and the turns at the end i don't know if it was worth the journey it took to get there so i gave it a 2.5 maybe a three star like i said it wasn't bad it was just so slow i don't know what it was about this pacing because even when like exciting things were happening i was still so bored but i did enjoy the end so i don't know where this lies i might unhaul it um i also got book mail today because why wouldn't i if it is a weekday i will be getting book mail and it is cute it is the true love experiment um by christina lauren i will say i'm not a fan of this cover compared to their other covers i like the their other book styles like the honeymooners you know that kind of vibe this is not a vibe but this looks very much like emily henry like too similar to emily henry um but this is i think like a follow-up slash sequel to the soulmate equation which i have not read yet but one day i will and i will have this one to jump straight into what does my copy of the soulmate equation look like This is very probably a very boring clip for you oh i don't have on my sh no that's something wilder um i'm positive it doesn't look like this i'm just i liked christina lauren's covers even like josh and hazel's guide and um oh god what other books like because i remember they had a bunch of standalones i'm getting them all confused in my head um, my favorite half night stand in a holidays. I had nothing wrong with those covers. I don't know why they've decided <sighs> this looks exactly like Emily Henry. The blocky colors, the figures that are very maybe it's by the same. I don't know if they are being released by the same publishing house. Maybe it's the same like cover designer. Anyway, so that is very exciting. Cool. Um, basically I took out a pretty significant stack of YA books the other day and I was like, let's get through these ones, let's unhaul the ones I don't want to read. I think I'm going to unhaul Five Survive. Anyway, <laughs> um, and I actually got through that entire stack. So I picked three more potential next reads. First we have got You Rich Sam. This is a hard-hitting way contemporary about a couple but one of them dies and they can somehow communicate via a phone there is the audiobook for this one at my library so i might go for that one um next i have i stopped somewhere by t.e carter this i just read way i hate when plot uh when a synopsis gives away way too much of a plot i just read i feel like 70 percent of this book's plot on the back so without giving you guys too many spoilers i am we basically follow an abusive an abusive boyfriend so ellie is dating a guy named caleb he tells her he's beautiful he, i think love bombs her um but then she starts to realize that he's a bit possessive he's really harsh um and that all escalates i suppose but I think maybe it was Chelsea from Chelsea Dolling Reads that recommended this one. So we will see. And last I picked up a book I think is meant to be relatively short. It is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. This is blowing up over the world, over the book talks, over everything. Um, so there's a cafe that offers its customers a unique experience, a, travel, a chance to travel back in time. Every time I pick this book up, I just don't end up reading it. So, and right now holding it, I'm like, I'm not in the mood. So I probably won't read that one. So it might be one of these two. I will give you updates. Hey guys, I did start reading. I stopped somewhere by T.A. Carter, but I'm not vibing with it at all. So I think I'm just going to call it quits for this video. Like I go back to work tomorrow anyway. Um... So yeah, I don't know what the point of any of that was, but I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time.